Howdy, I'm William. Uh, I'm going to start this a little different. I am a team of one, and so I'm living the startup dream, and I really would love for you to engage with this thought. Uh, we're a real company operating for about four years, but I would love for you to think about how you could uh, help or participate. So this is why I'm going to show you why we're here. Oh, I got the warning. Thank you. All right. So, as you all know, over the last seven years in particular, we're in this era, era of convergence where Google's reading your emails, cookies are tracking you, and you're seeing ads show up for underwear on CNBC, and Facebook knows your likes, and Pinterest knows your pins. Basically, the whole world is following you around, right? Um, you've got these ad tech, uh, you know, high-flying Silicon Valley uh, companies that are all just exchanging this information uh, about you as you go through your life. Um, you hear about the Internet of Things, this APIs and API management, and uh, big data is uh, kind of an old term, but really come into like daily vernacular. People that don't even really know what big data is, they say big data every day. Right? So the interesting thing is, that's all you, but on the Internet, right? What, what, is, what it isn't is you in real life, and that's 90% of the economy. Right? I'm not saying that online stuff isn't important. I think it's very important. But there is a whole other section of us as consumers and business owners that happens in brick-and-mortar stores and in our homes uh, and in the grocery stores. So what do I mean about in real life? And, and comparing these ad networks and Facebook likes to what's happening in brick and mortar stores. Well, when you go into a Target, they know exactly what you buy and they've profiled you and they can understand who you are as you walk through the aisles. But, but their data stops when you leave Target, right? But when you pay with the MasterCard there at Target, MasterCard says, oh, interesting, Kristen shopped at Target. Well, now she went and shopped at Whataburger. You might make an extrapolation there, but you actually have no idea what she bought at Target. You have no idea what she bought at Whataburger. So we end up with this. I got this email the other day. Thank you, Groupon, for sending me a, an offer to have my eyebrows waxed and tinted. This is big data. This is a $3 billion company that has access to probably more transactions than any of us in this room may ever experience. And this is the offer I got on, what was the date? September 29th, 2016. I'm never, ever going to get my eyes, maybe my wife wants me to do that, I don't know. But this is where we stand today as far as the intelligence behind individual purchasing behavior. So there's, there's a reason is because a payments industry, and I love kind of what's happened in kind of the dichotomy of conversations today. Payments industry is very interested in the transaction fees. Uh, they built a whole apparatus around that. To us, we're very interested in the data underneath that transaction. So by nature, we have to get involved in the transaction, but the fees are not what we're after. So our goal as a company, what we set out to do four years ago, is to build a way in which we can understand at a personal level what is in everyone's baskets as they move throughout their lives, whether that is online, on the internet, or in a brick and mortar store. That could be a mom and pop uh, at a barber shop or a coffee shop, or it could be at a big box retailer. So what we did to start that journey, as any startup does, is figures out how to, how to break that chicken and egg. And so we built some mobile point of sale apps that are for specific market needs. So a nonprofit or small business owner or political campaign downloads our app and uses that to conduct their business, to either accept donations or for you to buy your coffee at the counter. So in many cases, we compete against someone like Square, and that's how we make our money off of some transaction fees while we're collecting the data. But, well, so I just explained this. The, the idea is let's make it simple for our customers to give us the data that we want in exchange for a great experience on their side. Uh, so I'd love to get our product as a competitive bid on your site, right, and talk to you more about the different uh, uh, acquirers that have you know, merging APIs and things like that. So I can get into the payment part, but I like to stay back into the data piece. Um, one of the things we did to make it easy for our customers is we patented some computer vision technology that 
It's an accidental innovation. You've seen it in Uber, uh, but we have a patent that takes it uh, to kind of a different level with some neural networks. And there you go. I may not be understanding it completely, but I mean, a lot of the capabilities you're talking about are, are in place currently in the retail space, and they're in place currently in the online space. Is your is your point that they're not merged, that they're still separate? Because I, I don't know if that's necessarily true anymore. Yeah, things are happening. Uh, it, it is. It is. There's a there's a nexus there where you have, of course, point of sale providers in every brick and mortar store, and that's a competitive market, as we all talked about earlier. And of course, you've got online marketplaces, and Magentos, and e-commerce sites. Uh, the important piece is well, we're, we've actually got different products for different markets, right? So it's not that we would go to Best Buy and ask them to use our mobile point of sale. It's that we would go to a big enterprise and say, we've got some computer vision that may enable in-floor checkouts like the Apple Store, but with, without having payment hardware. They might use our payment tokenization, which would help their PCI compliance. Or they might end up buying some of our consumer data analytics by, or by contributing it to it themselves. But to a small business owner, we would then compete against Square. So they're kind of, they're different pitches for different uh, industry players, if that makes sense. Different, different uh, parts of the industry spectrum. Well, so um, someone would go into the retail space as a point of sale and try to sell a point of sale like the actual terminal and the hardware, you couple a payment, uh, payment processor with them. Our, our offering to that would be an addition to say, let us help you understand your customers better by integrating across those two. Right? So that doesn't really exist today. You've got, you've got people that are uh, wanting to sell you terminals and people that want to sell you processing, but they're not really stitching all that together. So, well, you talk, so like the Target example that I was giving, right? So they'll know, right? So they'll know that they've sold bulk to Target. So they, the Target's selling a product really well, but you know, uh, Procter and Gamble does not know that William Servin buys Frosted Flakes. That's the level of granularity that we're getting after. Right? They'll know that. Men 35 to 40 t may buy uh, beers and diapers, but they won't know who I am as a person and, then, and, then where, and what else I do. Yes, so, so taking that one step further, you're talking about the very granular level that you're getting. You're getting item level specific data about specific individuals, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the holy grail when it comes to tracking apps because we can only categorize things so well, especially at a store like Target, when it could be one of a hundred different categories of spending. So, are you making a way for applications like Cheddar or Budget to easily access that data to provide their consumer with their users with a further level of understanding about the categorization of their spending? Cool. So, I, I love your line of thinking. That's and that's uh, one of the reasons why we're here. So, our our system currently, while built on APIs, is not public. Uh, those APIs are locked in internally. One of the things we're doing that I'm doing um, in, in conversations with both enterprises and startups is what are interesting APIs for people to uh, latch into. So uh, there's some obvious ones, of course, to compete like against Stripe and online payments, but there's some more nuanced ones that we'd love to see how to monetize that data. Over here. Hello, on your right. Yes. Hello, you're other right. Hey, I just wanted to let you know you have a very engaging style of presentation. I was very drawn in and wanted to hear what was going to happen next. So, quick, good job on that. Uh, secondly, I really want to hear there's some opt in here because I, this does not sound interesting yeah. to me as a consumer unless I, I do, you know, I do track my budget in a way that some of this would be very helpful, but then not being able to, to, uh, Approve that has me quite concerned. Sure. So, uh, 
as we all have said in this room, is privacy is a, a very important thing. I'll, I'll take, a, not a, I won't say a contrarian point of view, but I do think privacy is a, a bit of a trade-off. Um, that if people receive value in exchange for privacy, most people will uh, exchange that. Uh, it's a choice, exactly, right. So, um, one of the things that we're doing is taking advantage of, of natural interaction. For example, if you go into a clothing boutique today and you buy something, many times they'll have like a join our email list pad or, or they'll ask you your name when, you, when, they make your, when they make the sale. Well, they're recording that and that's actually permissible and that's, that's not a, invading privacy. So we'll take advantage of that by kind of codifying that into a database so it makes it easy to access. But then of course we're never going to give another merchant your name uh, if you have not opted into that merchant. But what we might do is say people like this customer have bought X, Y, or Z. Okay. <laughs>